All right, welcome back to the Financial Insights Podcast. I'm joined this week by Ryan Louie, and we're doing something a little bit different this week. We are recording this not just in audio form, but in video form as well, and we'll be posting it on our YouTube page if you haven't checked it out. Uh, it's uh, YouTube slash Ford Financial Group, where you can subscribe to our videos, where it's not just podcasts, but other market updates and webinars and things like that. But this week, we are talking about something that has been all over the financial news all over the regular news, in fact, uh, we're talking about inflation. And even just recently, the local news came in and interviewed us for a story on inflation. It's because of the recent news that um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released their October Consumer Price Index data, or CPI. It's That's the measure of inflation. And it showed it climbed nearly 1% month over month, uh, which is... Um, much higher than the estimates for month over month. And the real headline was that year over year, prices increased 6.2%, which is a lot, I think, no matter how you shape it up. It's the highest since 1990 and is really reflecting higher prices, or well, they are higher prices, reflecting higher uh, demand and lower supplies. And that's why it has everybody's attention. So, Ryan, have you been fielding some questions from some people on inflation? Yeah, it seems to be the hot topic, you know, it, it, too, around just your casual conversations with friends and family. I think, again, it's something that involves your day to day activities. Sure. And people have noticed big jumps in whether it's gas, you're going out to eat, or the, some of the services, you know, cut, getting, getting a haircut. Um, yep. it's, it seems to be everywhere. And so it, it, it's a topic that, that's that been coming up a lot, again, through the media, through casual conversations with yep. a lot of people. Yeah. Well, you know, we joke sometimes that there is a, a local news bottom, if you will. It, the local news never comes in to interview us when it's good news. Right. But usually when they're here, we're at peak whatever, the market dropping or perhaps in this case, inflation, but it also reflects the interest of everybody on the topic, which is why I think we needed to cover it at this point. Well, hopefully, hopefully this, uh, you know, get you getting interviewed by the news on inflation is, is the turning point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, God willing. And I, and you know, it, it may be, um, I think the question is, uh, how does this compare to normal? Should we be worried? Is this full? Like where, where does six point, two percent year over year inflation land in the general scheme of things. Yeah. So I think some context um, helps to know where does, you know, six percent compared to the past. So over the last, you know, call it hundred plus years, the average inflation is a little bit over three percent. Mm -hmm. um, but more recently over the last couple of decades, we're sitting closer to about, you know, one and a half, two percent inflation rates. Right. So it is a big jump if you're comparing the more recent past to to, to, to what we're where we are currently this year. Sure. I I mean Six percent. Well, I'll just round down to six percent. Six percent is roughly double the average inflation over the last 20, 30, 40, 100 years. Right. So six percent's high. Or triple, triple over the last, you know, call it two decades. Yeah, exactly right. And so um, not only is it more than we're used to, it's just more period. Uh, is it as high as the late 70s? No, but we, we don't need to necessarily measure against the absolute high watermark here. Prices are going up. But right. in the same kind of sentence, though, Wages are going up. So I think some of this is a question is like, should be, should we be worried about this? Is this normal? You think if, if wages are going up and inflation is going up, it's almost a wash. Right, right. For people that, you know, are keeping up and we've talked about how social security is coming in around 5.9% cost of living increase. Right. You know, so again, if you're getting a 5.9% increase and again, this is just social security, but the, yeah. as an example. And but yet McDonald's is raising their menu prices by 6%. Right. Right. You're looking See, at something the, close there. Right. Um, but not everybody, not everybody's incomes are going up. You know, inflation hurts people on a fixed income that aren't getting cost of living adjustments. That's right. an example of that. Um, I would say from an investment perspective with really low or almost non-existent inflation over the last few years, you could park your money in a savings account and earn some insulting rate from the bank on your cash. And it didn't matter all that much because things weren't getting that much more expensive. Well, that has all changed. Right. Yeah. And especially when, again, inflation runs away and uh, you're, you're earning power, the interest, the interest that you're earning on it is close to zero. Right. And so you can put it into context that how much like uh, a savings account can really hurt you, especially when you have a significant amount of money right. in there. Let's just say hypothetically, yeah, hundred thousand dollars inside of your, 
your account that you're earning zero. We're used to seeing that 0% interest rate for, for a long time now. Right. And you're, again, getting 6% interest. That's a six per, $6,000 loss in purchasing power right. on that. On that. Now, you're not physically losing the money. You still no. have $100,000 in your account at the end of the year. Yeah, but you can only buy 94% of the stuff you could have bought a year ago. Right. And, and that compounds year over year. So we've gotten used to this stretch of not having the erosion in purchasing power here. But that's changing. And I think this also begs the question, well, okay, is six is a six percent inflation rate here to stay? Um, I you know, are we gonna revert to the mean? What do you think? I think that's really that's the that's the really hard answer to to get to because yeah, what is transitory? <laughs> what is transitory? I think that you had a lot of the economists think differently and they've turned out to be wrong. Yeah. Um and so I think it's about measure. It's hard to measure when is demand maybe going to tail off. Right. When is the supply and the money that that has come into the economy? When has that kind of worked its way through the system? And got absorbed or something? These things are really not easy things to, to to measure and put a time stamp on to say, hey, you know, in six months things will be better. Right. Right. I think at some point we can reasonably expect to revert to the mean. I know um, by some measures of bond yields, investors seem to think that we will have an average inflation rate of about three or so percent over the next five years. That means we're kind of hovering above and below that average. Of course, you're never exactly at it, which suggests that some think that this 6% rate of inflation may kind of wash away eventually, whether it's in six months or a year when the supply chain issues begin to get worked out. But there's a separate parallel conversation that goes on here, right? Which is to say, okay, the rate of increasing prices will begin to slow down, but that doesn't mean prices are going to go backwards. They're just going to start start going up more slowly. Yes, right. right. The, the the key word here that you know gets used by the media is transitory, and I think that sometimes what happens um, is that when people get the definition or get the understanding of it, they think that you know because price uh, inflation has gone up, it's going to then go down. Yes, yes, inflation goes down. But don't confuse that with prices going down. Yeah. Because like I said, if you went to the barber shop and they're charging you 20% more for a haircut now, right. we know that in six months from now that you know they may not rate, do another raise in their prices, but the, their prices are not going back to where they used to be. Right. And so that's the difference between you know transitory being, being that the inflation rate can go down, but the prices – the prices, again, are going to probably be staying staying closer to the same. Should people be worried about inflation, though? I think that you, your biggest worry with inflation is, you know, your investments, your savings, your income from an income perspective. And again, everyone is going to be different in, yeah. in, from, from that perspective. The people that um, historically have like to have a lot of money in savings as sort of a, a safety net, right? Cushion. It helps them sleep at night. Helps them sleep at night. Those people have, are, you know, dramatically affected. Um, again, as you had mentioned, those people on a fixed income and maybe a fixed income that doesn't go up with the cost of living adjustments. Right. And there's some, there are some of those type of um, sure. incomes. You know, those people are going to be affected because at the end of the day, if they're on a tight budget, um, you know, in terms of income coming in, expenses going out, those expenses just dramatically increased. Well, and from um, from an investment perspective. Your your aim for your returns should, at a minimum, be the rate of inflation. Sure. Right. The reason you invest is to help uh, maintain your purchasing power over time. So that five bucks that you've got now can grow at the same rate as inflation, and you can buy you five bucks worth of stuff today's stuff ten years from now, twenty years from now. And so, you know, getting back to the having a ton of money in savings. With no inflation or very little inflation over the last 10 or so years, it hasn't been that big of a deal. But now people need to find a way to get bigger returns, not sit in cash, and not that you're swinging for the fences and trying to beat your neighbor or your brother-in-law and whatever their investment returns are. But in real terms, your investments need to keep up with the pace of inflation. And even so lately, unfortunately, some of the most conservative portfolios because these bonds haven't done well as rates rise, aren't keeping up with inflation. So it's really kind of time to examine what your portfolio looks like in this inflationary and ultimately rising interest rate kind of environment, because we're going to see that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to, of course, say that, 
you want to get out of your comfort zone of risk, but you do no. need to re you do need to reevaluate it because again, if this stays around for a while and maybe this again, it's not six, but it stays four yep. again, you know, you're, you're earning half a percent in a CD that's one or two years out. Um, it's you're just not, you're not able to find the, the interest rate or the return on your safer investments to keep up. And that's, right. that's, that's where you do need to evaluate things. Um, Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you an, I, the analogy I like to draw. I might have even used this already in the podcast is when my wife makes like muffins for for breakfast or for the on the weekend, she will swap some ingredients for others. So if the if it if it calls for oil in the recipe, she'll swap it out and use applesauce. I don't know if you knew that you could use applesauce <laughs> in lieu of oil, but you can. And and that's the same idea, especially with a conservative portfolio where you've got inflation that you got to keep up with and very likely rising interest rates coming later to combat that inflation or at least keep a lid on it. You, you want to stay conservative. You want to keep baking muffins, but yeah. you want to be able to swap some of those ingredients because some of the ingredients are, um, have interest rate risk and some of these ingredients don't have as much interest rate risk. And so that's where your advisor kind of comes in and helps you sort through which of, which of these ingredients are suited for that particular environment. And combat, you know, really you're combating against what is the risk at the, at the time, right? Right now, inflation is sure. the risk of, the, you know, of the environment that we're in right now. You know, two years ago, we weren't really talking about inflation. So, you know, you're, you're combating something else yeah. at a different time. So it is, it is a moving target uh, that we're going to have to keep looking at if this is going to be the continued story. The irony here is that for 10 years, investors were wringing their hands over the fact that we didn't have any inflation, that the Federal Reserve couldn't manufacture any inflation, and that we were always on the precipice of deflation, especially in some years where inflation was less than a percent. Right. Um, and now we've got the inflation, and everybody's hand wringing over the inflation that we've got now. So you, you know, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. In the case of inflation, I think the reason why people or investors maybe were worried about not having inflation before is because inflation is the sign of an economy that has some forward momentum. Sure. It is it you don't get rising prices just because just because you have low supplies. You need to have demand for things that are unavailable. That's what pushes it higher. You you, should, you have to have a healthy economy. So the, right. you know the flip that's maybe the silver lining of sure. this, right? It, and that's a, that's an important thing. We wouldn't want to sacrifice a, a healthy economy to, to lower the inflation because there's going to be larger consequences to yep. that, a falling stock market, people losing jobs, et cetera. Sure. Um, so this, this is kind of a consequence of a very good economy that's, that's chugging along right yeah. now. And, and when you, when we're talking about inflation also, it's, it helps to slice the baloney a little bit thinner and recognize, um, some prices, some inflationary prices are stickier than others. Labor co you know, uh, if someone, gets a raise at work, they're not going to have that taken from them. If your rent goes up, that's not going to be, that's not going to be reduced just because prices go down. But other parts of the economy, we saw with lumber prices earlier in the year, right? They spiked up or some other commodities will spike up and then maybe come back down. And we're uh, used to seeing that with gas prices, right? And then gas prices, I know, you know, because everyone has to fill up on a weekly basis, sure. you know, you're used to seeing that, that sticker shock of how much it costs yeah. to fill up your car. Um, and, but it is historically one of those prices that will fluctuate over the course yep. of time. Like I said before, you know, your, 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 your barber may not change their prices right. going forward, but gas prices are probably going to fluctuate. Yeah. Like A, another prices. effect also, you know, as we're, we are, we're recording this before Thanksgiving, but we're getting into the holidays for sure. I know we've already started Christmas shopping in our household. Um, you're going to see things there like Black Friday, fewer discounts. You know, if if retailers have any inventory, they certainly don't need to discount it to move it right now. Right. Um, that could come back down the road where once inventories and supply chains kind of sort themselves out, we might get back to seeing those kinds of sales and those discounts, those seasonal discounts that we haven't seen for a while. <laughs> Here's the here's the prime case. I know this is the one that every everyone's. Are you going to do used cars? Use, yeah. Okay. Used good. cars. Used cars. Right. <laughs> okay. So used cars year over year are up twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. That's and, unbelievable. You know. So again, you had a you used car that was twenty thousand dollars before the pandemic. Um, it's twenty now twenty five thousand dollars for the same car. So if you're sitting on a jalopy, you're sitting on a gold mine. Right yeah, now. it's a great investment, right? Yeah. You should have all invested in used in used cars and put them in put them in our on our lawn. 
Um, but, you know, that is one that we would probably expect that once the supply chain issues come back, there's more car, new cars to be bought, yep. then there's less used cars that are needed. Um, you know, Hertz. It's, that old, it's that old pig in the snake thing where you just got to digest this big mess and then kind of get on the other side of it. Yes. Yes. I, so that is one definitely that we can't foresee is going to be sticking around with high prices or prices that are going to continue to increase um, as time time goes on. Yeah. Well, you know, it. there is also a school of thought here um, before we go on too much longer. There's a school of thought here also that there's there is some productivity that is baked into our economy right now. The Amazon effect, if you will efficiency, supply chain efficiency, um, communications have sped up around the world, this global economy. You could, as a business, you could figure out how fast Taiwan's manufacturing your chipset and where you, you know, there, so there are some things that have helped keep inflation really low. Yes. This high productivity, high efficiency has helped keep inflation low over the last decade. And that may come back once we're out from this COVID mess, that could come back to help us out. Yeah, so- Really, one of the key catalysts, I think, to, you know, alluding back to, to the inflation rates being low over the last couple of decades is technology, right? Technology is a deflationary. Um, it, it keeps costs kind of going down. You know, inflation right. gets makes things more productive. It yeah. also gets usually technology gets cheaper over time. Yep. And so that has kept, I think, inflation low. I think what we've had here, though, over a short impact because of COVID is that everything's kind of been a mess. Things have been accelerated. Yeah. You know, Things that may have changed in the future got kind of accelerated and happen now. Yep. I think technology will definitely be a, a factor in this. It just needs sure. to catch up to something that happened in a in really quick amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no question this is an after effect of COVID, $6 trillion of stimulus spending, crisis spending, um, uh, increasing the money supply by 25%. So despite all these kind of one-off factors, it still makes me cringe when we say, oh, well, it's different now. Right. Like we've got technology, it's different now. It is almost never totally different now from the way we're not smarter, we're no less greedy. You know, I mean, it's just all of these, the human factors all remain in all of this stuff. So it's going to be interesting to watch it kind of ultimately settle out. Uh, is there, your kids don't listen to this podcast or no. I'm assuming they're not going to be watching this. No. Um, so is there a hot gift that you're going to get for your kids or you guys are shooting for that it's hard to come by? I have not even looked into it. And I know that I have, because I've talked to clients about this and said, you yeah. know, you probably want to start looking at getting your gifts now because, you know, come, come, you know, after Thanksgiving, I think what is going to happen is that you're going to have a hard time finding, especially for kids, the, the, the hot I, one, the hot item or the, the item that's number one, you may even go shopping and you're like, the, the first, second, and third item that yep. they want is not even available. Right. And so you may be, it's not that consumers won't be spending money. I think they'll spend the same amount of money, but they're going to get item number four, five, or six. Sure. Well, we're projected, yeah, we're projected to have retail sales go up by seven to 9% over the holidays. So people are going to be spending, yes. whether you're going to get that Xbox or PlayStation you want for your kid is a whole nother question. Right. Um, we got Henry for his birthdays runs right up to Christmas. And so he got a 3d printer. Oh. For his birthday. It's this like little thing and it yeah. spits out trinkets and it's, you know, he's a gadget kid. So it well, you already day. got it. So, so we already got it. Yeah. Anything. So, but it was, it was, we had to order it well in advance. We had to wait a really long time. And just as another example, we had to buy new um, side tables for our bed in our bedroom. Yeah. They came in, they, they are coming next week. We got the email. We ordered them in April they weren't set to come in until January. So we are very excited that yes. my, my wife's very excited that it's in a few weeks early. But those are the kinds of supply chain things that we're talking about right now that eventually will kind of they will work they will work out. themselves out. But yeah. the, even the time frames can be a little bit scary because yeah. we have a friend that needed a, a, an oven and they, their oven's coming. They ordered in August and they're getting it next November. And yeah. So you're like 14 months to get that's an unbelievable. Is, is not it's not real reasonable, no. but it is the world we live in right yep. now. And I think yep. we gradually, I mean, not that you like it, but I think you, you you live with it right now. Well, yeah, many of us are living with it. Some are having a harder time living with it, but trying to fight it. I mean, this is just what we're, what we're left with. And you can't be surprised with the amount of stimulus and, and stuff that we, without the amount of money sloshing around in the system, this can't be a total surprise for anybody. Right. Thankfully, we've got the growth to keep up with the inflation, because if you didn't, it's stagnant growth plus inflation. That's stagflation. 
We certainly don't want that either. That's a terrible investing environment, but that's that's nowhere near where we are right now because we're growing by leaps and bounds as well. Well, let's leave it there. Um, I think this has been a good a good in, uh, inflation discussion, and uh, you know it it is is really easy to be thrown off and worried by a lot of the headlines. If you read the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, or even the Fresno Bee, you, it, these are some eye popping numbers. But a little bit of context is important for this. So. Um, I appreciate you having this chat. Yeah, thanks for and, having me. Uh, and we'll do it again. All right. All right. Thanks, Brian.